Hello students. In today's session, we are going to deal with Cauchy-Riemann equations, which is a particular topic which had been dealt with in earlier classes uh, when we were in in the degree classes. So, um, before going on into revising the Cauchy-Riemann equations. We'll just rewind uh, what we did uh, when we were dealing with principal branch of logarithm. So there is a definite question why we defined the principal branch of logarithm. So why? What is the requirement of defining it? Uh, is the first session we are going to deal in this lecture. While we were defining logarithm. We understood that logarithm was defined as a solution set of z for the equation e raised to z is equal to w and the solution set we found it to be the set of all logarithm of the real logarithm of modulus of w plus i into argument of w plus 2 pi k where k is varying in the set of integers. So this essentially will make us understand that the logarithm which we define in complex analysis is multivalued because it is having a lot of elements inside the set that is called logarithm. So in order to associate logarithm as a function, we highly require it to be single valued. So such that every element in the domain is uniquely mapped. Okay. So for that purpose, we are restricting the domain of logarithmic function to the slitted complex plane such that how did we define it we said that the function is going from g to c where g is a slitted complex plane the complex plane excluding the negative real axis and we define the function to be f of z is equal to f of r e raised to i theta which is equal to the real logarithm of r plus i theta where r is modulus of z and theta is argument of z and we said that said that this theta is varying only in between minus pi and pi since z is coming from the slitted complex plane so it is single valued definitely and we said that if we define the function so the function is definitely continuous and it satisfies the equation e raised to f of z is equal to z for every z belongs to g making it a branch of the logarithmic function logarithm Okay, and then we call this particular function to be the principal logarithm, uh, principal branch of the logarithm, and uh, it is definitely single valued, and we can call it as a function, a real function which is single valued. Okay, so that's why we brought into the principal branch of log logarithm while uh, dealing in uh, dealing with that in the sessions. Okay, next is a remark about the preposition 2.10, which we are rewinding. This preposition said that uh, if we are having a G which is open and connected and uh, the function is happening from this G to the complex plane and uh, suppose this, this function is differentiable with its derivative to be 0 for every z belongs to G, then the function is constant. This was a preposition 2.10. We proved it thoroughly. Okay, suppose if in this case, we are dropping the connectedness of this particular G. Okay. So I can take it to be uh, the disjoint union of two open sets, right? I'm calling G1 and G2 to be open sets. They are disjoint. Okay. And I'm going to define a function. Okay. Uh, this function is uh, defined as uh, this is equal to 1 plus i, a constant complex number for every set belongs to G1. And i for every complex number z belongs to g2. Okay, right? So if you are thinking about the derivative of this function, we know that the derivative will be 0 inside g1 and 0 inside g2. Right? So totally I, I can say that f dash of z is equal to 0 for every z belongs to g1 union g2. Right? But you can see that the function is not a con constant function because we cannot say that f of z is equal to a particular complex number, right? It is not a constant function. So this preposition, the, con the contribution of the preposition is not being satisfied. Why? Because we had 
diluted the property connectedness so that means that this connectedness is an important property when we are dealing with uh, these analytic functions right so we are going to define a simple set, set of the complex plane which is called the region a region is nothing but an open connected subset of the complex plane so the g we are always taking when we are dealing uh, the analytic function is called a region okay open connected now we'll deal the main session of today's lecture which is cauchy riemann equations for that suppose you are having an analytic function from a region g to c the f okay and i'm taking a complex number z from g x plus i y you can call it x plus i y and suppose the image of the z f of z it's happening inside c so i can i can write it as a real portion plus the i into the imaginary part right so that is equal that that can be written as f of z is equal to f of x plus i y which is equal to the real part u right since the function is depending on x and y the variables x and y definitely this u will also be a function of x and y so i'm going to write uh, instead of u i'm going to write u of x y x comma y plus i into similarly v is written as v of x y which means that the real part of f of x plus x plus i y is equal to u of x y and the imaginary part of f of x plus i y is equal to v of x comma y right for every x plus i y belongs to g right so this is one conclusion we are getting from here okay the next portion we are going to deal is we are we are having an aim okay our aim is simply to calculate the derivative of this function in two different ways we have dealt with such things in uh, the introduction to complex analysis in the degree classes okay so here obviously we might be uh, thinking about uh, finding the limit h tends to 0 uh, when h is tending uh, along the real axis and the second may uh, the second way might be to uh, move along the imaginary axis because uh, limits can be calculated in complex analysis in infinite number of ways so uh, for our simplicity i'm going to take in two ways okay Uh, and definitely we know that the func the derivative exists because we have taken the function to be analytic okay so in the first way you can uh, you assume that our uh, h is not equal to 0 it is a real number it is moving along the real axis and uh, it is tending to 0 okay and consider the fraction f of z plus h minus f of z divided by h instead of z i am replacing x plus i y and uh, i am going to take the real real part x plus h together inside the braces see and then i am going to uh, write each of the functions as a real part plus i into the imaginary part of the function so f of x plus h plus i y is equal to u of x plus h comma y plus i into v of x plus h comma y and likewise that is happening here also and then i am going to take the the function of u together u of x plus h comma y minus u of x plus sorry x comma y divided by h right plus i into the v's together and then i am going to do is what i am going to do is i am going to tend h to zero in the lhs and rhs so lhs i am going to get this rhs i am going to use the property of limits limit of a plus b is equal to limit of a plus limit of b right and also if a constant is coming i can take the constant out the property is being used here and then you can see that this is nothing but the derivative of f okay f dash of z and what is this term here this term is the rate of change of x right rate of change of x uh rate of change of u with respect to x so since here uh, we have we are having two variables associated with u i can say that it is the partial derivative of u with respect to x right the first term the second term is plus i into the partial derivative of v with respect to y 
simple the same kind of steps is taken when we move along the imaginary axis we are ten, uh, we are letting h is not equal to 0 it is a real number moving along the imaginary axis and it is tending to 0 consider the fraction here you have a difference f of z plus ih minus f of z divided by ih instead of h i am going to take ih if h is tending to 0 we definitely know that ih is also tending to 0 right so the same manner i am going to replace z with x plus i y and uh, rearrange the real and imaginary parts inside the braces and then i am going to take the uh, i am going to multiply it with i and uh, divide it with i okay and when you rearrange to make use together and these together you are going to get the terms sitting here these are all very easy steps okay and we are going to make the x tend to 0 in the lhs when we are tending to 0 we get that is nothing but f dash of z it doesn't make any difference if this is i h or h because when h is tending to 0 we know that i h is tending to 0 right so this is equal to you can take the minus i out okay and uh, in the right side and uh, you get the equation here and since the derivative x is it will be unique so we are going to uh, equate both the forms we got for f dash z in the equation star and double star when we equate together take the real equate the real parts and equate the imaginary parts and when we equate them we are going to get the equations like this dou by dou x of u of x y is equal to dou by dou y of v of x y dou by dou y of u of x y is equal to minus dou by dou x of v of x y which are called the cauchy riemann equations or either you can say as use u x is equal to v y u y is equal to minus v x okay. in any form you can uh, depict that okay now assume that this u and v are having second order partial derivatives and they are continuous suppose they are continuous okay so we are taking the uh, again we are taking the derivative so i am going to take the derivative with respect to x okay so when we are taking the derivative with respect to x i am going to get this and for this i am going to take the derivative with respect to y so i am going to get this we can exchange x and y here okay we are assuming like that so when we are adding both these equations you are going to get that yes dou square u by dou x square plus dou square u by dou y square is equal to 0 and uh, you just check out whether dou square v by dou x square plus dou square u by dou y square is equal to 0 verify it it is easy it is, it is true verify uh, if it is happening so the next one is called a harmonic function which is also a definition you are familiar suppose you have a function this function is called harmonic if it satisfies two conditions the first condition is that it has second order der derivatives which are continuous and the sum of all second order derivatives of f will be zero okay so that means here the u and v we are talking about are definitely harmonic functions that is the main session for today and uh, we'll be dealing with uh, some more uh, facts of Cauchy Riemann facts related to Cauchy Riemann equations in the uh, coming sessions and thank you